Our theme was praise him in the hallway. Remember that? Yes. Meaning while you're knocking on God's door saying, help, let me in, open a door. I need a new car now. I need a job like now. I need a husband now. I need a girlfriend now. I need a wife now. I need a boyfriend now. I need a new movie now. I need a new gig now for all of you musicians. I need answers to prayer now. Oh, by the way, I need money now. Who can identify standing in the hallway knocking on that door? But we were taught last month that God appreciates us trusting him completely. And he showed me, remember, he showed me that he gave me a vision of going to a play. And when you're sitting in the theater, you're seeing these beautiful long drapes waiting for the curtains to open. But he says to tell you that just because you see nothing on the stage does not mean that he's not busy at work for your miracles, your breakthroughs behind the curtains. He's just waiting to open them up so you can see the complete, finished product, what he's been making up for you and building. It takes time. Some miracles take longer than others. Some take longer than others. We cannot rush God because you know what happens when we rush God? He will give us our own free will. And guess what? You may get that half of a package delivered. You may get that husband or wife that is so damaged and so broken, but you didn't give him time to fix the broken pieces before he presented them to you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you see how different and how devastating this can be if you rush God before it is supposed to be. My Jewish friends use a Yiddish term called besheret. Besheret, you can look it up. Besheret means God's meant to be or something that is put together by God. It's besheret. So if you are waiting for your meant to be husband, meant to be wife, wife, meant to be job, meant to be perfect agent, meant to be financial breakthrough, meant to be perfectly healed and whole. If you're waiting for your besheret, don't rush God. Because he says, I've got this. And he knows who trusts him. You see, he's God. You may say to others, and some of you pastors and evangelists up there teaching, say, trust God. Just trust God. Those words roll off your mouth very easily. But I know some of you personally, and you're not trusting God. I'm calling you out on your stuff. Because it is almost impossible to trust God 24-7. Now, you see, I said almost impossible. But it is possible. You can achieve that level to where you just want to be only navigated and led by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You only want God's beshirt. Without that, you're going to receive your blessings in quarters, in halves. And sometimes, not at all. Because you see, God loves you so much that he says, no, no, no. You're going to have to learn to wait. Because if you could just wait, you're going to see the entire play played out on stage. The performance of your life. I don't know about you, but I want to give my desires. 
I want to give my wants and my wishes to him. And I only want his best window. No more friends that I thought were friends arriving on my doorstep saying, not, not, let me in, let me be your best friend. Ain't gonna happen here anymore. I'm not signing for that package. Because God said, don't blame me. You know, I give you a brain, use it. I give you wisdom. And if you don't have wisdom, because some people's barometers are way, way off. It's like, your picker is off. That's why there's X's and X's and X's and X's. Because our picker was obviously off. Something was broken. Maybe we were too desperate and we settled for less because we couldn't have time to wait for God's best. That's a very dangerous place to be. Don't you want God's complete delivery? I do. No more, no more, no more. Another Jewish term I feel like using because it's Rosh Hashanah. Mashukana. Mashukana. You know what Mashukana is? My, my Jewish friend, uh, uh, he's Israeli, Jacob Bressler. Because somebody was praying about Mashukana, and I called him, I go, what is Mashukana? He said, Mashukana? That's crazy. That's craziness. Crazy makers. Crazy. So, I'm done with the crazies. How about you? Yes, amen. Done with the Mashugana. Yes. I'm waiting for God's best. Yes. Because when God gives you a present, He doesn't give you something that is half done amen. Yeah. or half finished. Can you imagine you order something online these days, what everybody's doing, or pick it up in person, whatever? And it's a masterpiece. It's a beautiful statue that maybe you ordered from Italy. Some fabulous statue. And you go to open it up, and it's a half of a statue. It's like, what? What is this? What did I pay? What? And they say, sorry, miss. Sorry, sir. This is what you ordered. You didn't give the sculptor time to finish. You demanded it right now. Pretty good, right, George? Yeah. Yeah. Do you see? God has everything right in the palm of his hands. And Daddy God wants to give you his very best. If you would just trust him, stop rushing him, hang on to your pants and wait. You have to wait. Sorry. Some of us are very spoiled, and we're like, wah, I don't want to wait. Sorry. Welcome to life. I feel like doing my Jewish interpretation. That's the way it works. I'm so sorry. Or welcome to the real world. But I've been waiting so long. We'll wait a little longer. Or you could settle for a half of a man. Or half a woman full of mashugana. You, you figure it out. <laughs> no, thank you. So do you have, the question is, do you have what it takes to wait? Do you have what it takes to just wait for his best? That's a loaded question. We've got some strong personalities in this room. You're toughies. I think you can wait. If you settle, don't call me or email me and say, oh, I need help, I made a huge mistake. Let not your heart be troubled. Why are you fretting, anxiety ridden, filled with fears and tears? Don't you know God has a plan? In Jeremiah, for I know the plans I have for you, right, Deborah? For I know the plans I have for you, Nikki, to prosper you, to give you a future of hope and greatness. Right, Dr. Wadaker? He has the plans. 
but we just have to trust the plan maker, the way maker, that he's got this. And it isn't his timing. One day in heaven, I pray that God will share with us. This just came to me. All the golden opportunities. He just might do this. To just pull back a curtain and show you all the incredible golden opportunities. And all the incredible blessings. Perfect people. Perfect jobs. Promotions. Blessings. Homes. That he just was waiting to bestow on you. But you just had to rush him. And he never got to bring them down to earth to you. I pray that one day that we get to see that. It'll make us go, wow. Hmm. I did settle for less, didn't I, Lord? I should have waited. I should have waited. Do not walk around in the defeated mode because God is not working fast enough for you. Well, God just doesn't love me like he loves you, Lee. I can see he's, are you kidding me? You have no idea where these shoes have walked, where these feet have landed. You have no idea the mashugana I've had to go through in my life. So don't be comparing notes with me or anyone else. Don't judge. If you see me wearing a new dress, it's about time I get a new dress. You know, and some people say, well, I don't know about these pastors, you know, we're driving nice cars. I'm like, are you kidding me? Do you think God just wants the evil? The wicked, the devil, and all of his demons from hell to drive nice cars? I don't think so. That's not my God. Right, Mary? Remember Miriam and Catherine who were on our way here? There was a beautiful Rolls Royce going on the freeway. And just right beside us, right, Miriam? Just cruising. It was brand new. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. It was beautiful. You know, I'm not going to say what we said, but anyway, bottom line is, if God wants to bless me with the rolls, he will. Party hard heart, and you're going to have to like it, or don't talk to me. Who cares? But you know what? The Lord knows the literal hell on earth that I have been through. I have had to claim bankruptcy. I lost my home in the earthquake. I was homeless overnight. So don't tell me anything about prosperity and that I should not be prosperous, okay? This is not even part of my sermon, but I'm going there. I'm just so tired of you judgmental, critical spirits, you radical fanatics out there, judging everybody that has a nice car, a new ring, a new pair of heels, you don't know. They may be shopping at Goodwill or a consignment store. I've done that, okay? In fact, the dress I have on and this top came from a consignment store. Thank you. I didn't have to tell you that. But it's none of your business if other pastors and evangelists need to prosper because you don't know the living hell that they have been through to get to the position that the Lord has elevated them to. So don't be judging anyone. You're not the only one that deserves a nice car, a nice job, financial breakthroughs. Thank you. Pastors have to live. Evangelists and missionaries have to live and pay their bills. They have to eat. Who do you think pays their bills? Who pays for their electricity? Who pays for their rent? So please take a check on yourself. Some of you just are so out of control. Did you see this? How did she afford this? And how did he get that? Really? That is just so wrong on so many levels. Because you know what? They probably went through their own pile of hell 
to get to where they are and figure that they deserve nice because this time the barometer is right. This time they waited for God's best. This time they waited for him to open the door of prosperity. This time they didn't rush everything and trusted God for all things. They trusted the Lord. That's how they ended up with the bigger and better. And I want you to know that right now, if you will trust God to do all things for you, trust him to give you bigger and better. Don't rush him to open that door. And I know, I know it's hard to wait. And it's easy to be so frustrated. But God says, please, if you could just wait. Amen. Wait. Learn the art, because it is an art. Waiting and trusting go hand in hand in heaven. Do you understand that? Waiting and trusting are related to each other. That's how God works. You can't just wait. You've got to wait and thank you. Please put that in your mind. Write it on your fridge. Put a note. Stick it everywhere. Put it in your car. I must wait, P.S., and trust. That when God is good and ready to open up this door for me, he will. And in the meanwhile, I'm going to praise him. In the meanwhile, I'm going to sing to him. In the meanwhile, I'm going to tell people all the good that he's done for me while I'm waiting for him to give me bigger and better. Yes, amen. Try that. Because that will make God open the door quicker than you have ever imagined when you wait and trust him. That he is able to give you far greater, exceedingly, abundantly above what you even ask. Yes. Trust him. Yes. Amen. Wait and trust. Thank you. Can we stand for us? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. At the end of every service, I offer the whole world. And at the end of every TV show, I offer something called the RSVP prayer. And those of you who are watching, the Lord said, no matter what religion, no matter what race, he wants everybody to come to heaven. He said, I don't send anybody to hell. They send them on, them, themselves to hell. Right. Yes. He sends no one to hell because I get this all the time. Well, how could God, who's supposed to be a God of love, send anybody to hell? Hello, Baba, he doesn't. You send yourself to hell. Hello, sister, he doesn't. By you refusing to accept Jesus as his Savior is your e-ticket to hell. There it is, I said it. So, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm not trying to guilt you into saying this prayer. It's not my job to do that. It's the Holy Spirit's job to prompt you. But the Lord said to tell everyone that the kingdom of heaven is like any nice event on earth. Think about it. Any nice event that you get invited to. Any nice restaurant that you want to eat at. You don't just walk in unless you know the owner. You have to have reservations, don't you? A wedding, when you get a wedding invitation, a party, my goodness, even a baby shower. You've got an RSVP for any nice celebration. Or your name's not written in the guest book. There's no reserved seat. There's no food for, you know, prepared for you and you just don't get in. So... If on earth any wonderful, nice event you have to call ahead and make a reservation, you've got an RSVP, you don't get far greater, ever greater than heaven. That's the biggest party in the universe, paradise, one day. So if you want to make sure you're going to be ending up in paradise, 
and you're not sure if your name is on God's big reservation book called the Lamb's Book of Life, life please pray for me, uh, with me and for me. Pray with me right now in the name of Jesus. Let's RSVP. Let's call God right now. And let's reserve your seat in heaven right now. If you've never done this, you need to do this. This is the biggest RSVP you need to do. Just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I come to you a sinner. And I ask you to forgive me of my sins. As I forgive all those who sin against me. I believe that Jesus is the Christ. The Son of the living God. Who died for me. And arose for me. So that I can spend eternity with you. Please put my name in your book. And reserve me a seat. As I follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus name. Thank you. Amen. If you've said that prayer for the first time and you just RSVP to heaven, to heaven's invite, please send us a note. You can send us a note here on Facebook or you can send a private note or you can send it to my, uh, uh, my email, which is lee, L-E-E, -E, at leebenton.org. Send us a note. Drop us a note, lee at leebenton.org. Let us know that you just made this great decision to RSVP to God's reservation in heaven. We love you so much. We look forward to you joining us next Monday. We're always right here the second Sunday of every month. So just be blessed and know that we're praying for you. And please cover us here. God bless you until we see you next month. Thank you. Thank you.